Thanks, Nick, for having me. Uh, fun story. The first time I saw Nick, we, I was at Launch Academy, and I looked at and he's a futurist. I was like, wow, I want to be that. And now he invites me to talk in, in, in one of his events, and like, I'm super excited. But I didn't tell him, because like, this is the first time he knows. Like, I'm super excited inside. Cheers. So thanks for having me. Hopefully, you don't want to regret it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Hussein Halak. I, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, speaker sometimes. And uh, I love working with startups. I used to be in Launch Academy as a general manager. And uh, I'm an evangelist right now. I am the VP of product and um, strategy at a technology company called 3 Theory Logic. That's about it. Let's get right into it. Why education is doomed, and so are we. So I've been in education for as long as I can remember from the time I was able to, uh, I would, had siblings and I can talk down to them. That's my idea of education at the time. So uh, they hated it, obviously. But I, I became better, so don't worry. So, um, and I've, I've ran many workshops, I've, I've taught, and I love it. And the biggest thing is, I, I looked at education and I wanted to know what is education really? And, and uh, so for me, I used to focus obviously on few aspects of it. And then as, as I learned more, of it, uh, more about it, it's, it's actually a universe. So I'm going to walk you through what is the universe of education and then get right into why it's doomed. So these are the elements of the education universe. So the first element is learning. We learn all the time. Uh, not because we want to, it's just how we grow as human beings. So we learn how to walk, we look around, we, we learn. Uh, that's the process of assimilating information. Um, then we're surrounded with knowledge, right? So we're always surrounded with knowledge that we acquire, uh, some intentionally by reading books, going to libraries, some uh, forced on us, <laughs> like going to school, uh, or uh, through, through what we have to develop. And then we have the skill that we develop. So we have skills that we develop, uh, like walking is a skill until we forget it's something that, uh, that we need and it becomes a habit. And we develop skills like uh, play the guitar, for example. But these are the core elements of, of education. But there are other elements of how we get this. So we get this in many different ways. We get this sometimes through storytelling. So we're told stories when we're young about certain things that help us learn. Uh, we tell stories to ourselves all the time, hopefully no BS stories. Um, and we told stories uh, as a way of transferring information. We then, uh, one, of the, one of the ways as well we learn is we look for evidence, proof that certain things are in a certain way. Um, then we, hopefully, we, we learn some truths along the way. And finally, these kind of elements help us shape our values and help us shape our beliefs, our beliefs of whether it's true or not. And finally, we get our habits that some of us are become unconscious things that we do habitually. So these are the elements of the education universe. So education part of the, <laughs> of the talk is done. Um, let's talk about why it's doomed. So if we look at the education uh, universe elements, um, it's pretty fascinating. Uh, it, this, is, this is how we learn. This is, it, it's all of these elements that are coming together. Um, uh, for example, let's take uh, blockchain. Okay, so blockchain, we, we learn it from probably listening to someone, we go and search, and, and blockchain, I'm passionate about blockchain, um, we go acquire knowledge by searching Google, reading some articles, and we may develop some skills by, for example, learning to code, or, you know, trying to build something, even, uh, you know, uh, conce conceptually. But then we hear somebody's story about how they made money on Bitcoin, and we form an opinion, hey, we maybe can make money, you know, uh, uh, you know, trading Bitcoin, and then we trade Bitcoin, and we don't make money, <laughs> or we lose money, or we trade some, some sort of token, hopefully you don't, because most of them are shit tokens. And um, then, for example, we look for evidence of what we do, uh, we, and then we discover our own truth. For example, crypto is going to change the world, or it's not. But what's happening with, with education is something that is concerned. What's happening with education is, um, first of all, studies show that people stop learning at a certain point or they desire to learn. Now, we're learning small stuff, but I mean real learning, diving into something. People don't seek it out, until uh, most people, uh, until they're forced to. 
So they learn something, they stick with what they learn. Kind of might, may sound familiar. Um, uh, developing skills. A lot of people remain with the skills they developed when they were when they developed those skills, especially when it's work. And then they look for work or they look for things that they can do based on the skills they have. We don't like to acquire new skills. It's hard to acquire new skills. And um, we hear stories, but the biggest thing that is missing, as you can see here, is the search for evidence. And we live in a post-truth world, whatever that means, or alternate truth, alternate facts. So what does that leave us with? Where we're always subject to information and knowledge. We get thrown knowledge our way. And knowledge doesn't mean true or false. It just means things we're acquiring. So it means information coming our way, which we live in a, in a, in a, in a time when we have an explosion of information. However, what's, what we're not st stopping, uh, like what we don't stop doing is we are a values, beliefs, and habits machine. We're always forming, either we, we have values that are there or our values are being shaped all the time, our beliefs and our habits. So we end up, if you look at it, we end up with knowledge that most likely confirm our values, beliefs, and habits, especially when we're not seeking the other ones. So why is this? So, so what's, what's the big deal? Well, the problem is the world is becoming more complex. So for example, new technologies are very complex, more complex than previous technologies. Blockchain is one. It takes a lot to learn it. It's completely... So moving from a centralized way of thinking to a decentralized way of thinking, moving from a place where I can call Amazon and say, I forgot my password, can you help me retrieve my password and access to my account, to a place where if you have a million dollars in Bitcoins and you lose your private key, it's gone. Like, try to kind of reconcile that. Because people are like, who do I call when I lose my Bitcoins? Nobody. No, no, but really, who's the CEO of Bitcoin? You know, where can I get my money back? No, it's gone. So it's, it's very hard to wrap our heads around that. It's a new, new way of thinking, new way of learning. Quantum computing. Very, very difficult field. Okay? To, so how do, how, do we, how do we wrap our heads around that? We're used to computers and we thought, okay, we're done. I figured out computers. That's it. I figured out where to save my files, how to back up. Now I need to figure out, oh, you, need, you, need, uh, you mean I need to change my password every time I log into a different account? Okay, new password for a different account. Okay, I got it. Now you have quantum computers. Okay, what is that? What about, I don't know if you heard of this, exascale computers. Computers that do a billion, billion floating point operation per second. Okay, so this is now a thing. So how do you wrap our head around that? How do you do that? Uh, our problems are global. Our problems are no longer belong to, to the tribe that we that our brain was developed to comprehend. Um, 100 million homeless people around the world. How do we even begin to think about a problem that is global and try to solve it? How do we even begin to figure out how to handle the refugee situation around the world? or that n pollution is killing 9 million people around the world. Or that 1.2 million kids are being trafficked. These are huge problems, and, and the education that we have, knowledge meets beliefs, and values, and habits, without having the other elements of the education universe, it's very hard to solve. And finally, we have multi-level challenges. This is where it becomes um, really kind of mind-blowing for me at least. So for example, you have vaccine hesitation. People saying, um, I don't believe this. What's your evidence? I don't need an evidence. I read an article online and it matches my beliefs, so I'm not gonna vaccinate my child. And so I put the community at risk. 
Now, I'm not saying right or wrong, but think about that. Moving from knowledge, watching a YouTube video, to this matches my beliefs, and so I'm going to take actions based on it that puts a whole community at risk. I know, I know I grew up with a um, very unhealthy look at addic addiction. I looked at, okay, if you're an addict, it must be something wrong with you. Because I'm not an addict, you are. Obviously, I was not informed at all. It, it, I, I was the epitome of knowing some information and then matching my values and beliefs. But then when I looked at it, read the evidence, I changed my perspective on it. So these are multi-level problems, these are not easy things to think about even, not, not even to solve, just to start thinking about it. And finally, probably the debate that is dominating the world right now, okay? And you, that turns some of the smartest people um, to the most stupid sounding people, at least for me, um, is climate, global, global, climate change and global warming. Because that people say, um, I read this article and I believe, uh, it's funny, the funniest one that I heard is there are these, uh, climate warming is becoming a religion for people. I was like, really? Okay. So believing in, in science is a religion now. Okay. So, again, you might think a little bit where I am on the topic, but the bottom line is thinking about this, and I don't have solutions for you, and I don't have answers. But thinking about that, for me, the biggest thing that I got is where is it coming from? And what it comes down to is if you look at education, if you look at our schools, if you look at our, and how we educate on multiple levels, what we're doing is we're focused on giving information. Predominantly, there's a focus on giving information, knowledge. Here's the knowledge. The worst one that I heard is a smart person on, uh, like who does smart bi business videos recently did a video on global warming. And his call was the biggest surprise one. And say, listen, I'm here to present you some facts. Do your own research. So for me, that triggered something. I said, hang on a second. Let's say I do my own research. How do I do my own research? Probably Google, right? I'll go Google and say climate warming, climate change, and I'll start reading. Now, half of the stuff is not most of the stuff that I'm reading. I have no idea what I'm reading because I'm not a climate scientist. I'm not a, uh, you know, I don't know what terminology for that anyway. But I'm not a scientist to understand what the heck they're talking about and what's the impact of, let's say, something went up, or what's this chart mean or that chart mean. So let's say I do my research. What I'm going to end up with even though I'm someone who considers, I have a very high opinion of myself. So I consider myself, I'm an engineer, you know, I love science and I read quite a bit. But even for somebody like me, I'm going to end up at a YouTube video summarizing and simplifying thing from, things for me. Like, here's the science, here's what this one's saying, here's what this one's saying, which means global, science, science, uh, global warming is a thing. Or which means global warming isn't a thing moving from knowledge again to belief. But I cannot understand the evidence. I cannot uncover the truth on my own because I am not, this is not my area of expertise. It's kind of like how people, in my area, let's say blockchain, it's kind of like how people try to explain blockchain to me and try to tell me what's good about crypto, what's bad about crypto, or how it works. And I'm like laughing and I'm trying to hold that laugh. You know, like trying, like this person is a complete idiot, don't have any idea what they're talking about. That's how I felt about myself when I was reading about global warming. And, so, and I wondered, and I wrote a, a comment for that person on YouTube. I said, you're asking people to go search. I mean, I like your business videos. You always sound very smart. But here you're out of your depth. You ask, you're asking people to go search. And one of the biggest challenges you're missing is that they don't have the skill set the expertise, the ability to uncover the evidence, the ability to uncover what is true and what is not. They have access to knowledge, which gives them the perception that they can be as smart as the rest of the people who are focused on this topic and giving their life to it. Now, that doesn't mean that people who give their life to something, and we've all met these people who spend 20 years on something, and they don't know shit. 
We know those people, right? So that's, that's not the evidence. But somebody's dedicated to something and understands. Think of your life. I want to leave you with something. Maybe something you can relate to, an example. Think of your life. When was it a time when you met someone who's kind of stepping on a field that you're an expert in and you know what the hell you're talking about? Not because you're, you're, like, you're full of yourself, just like me, but because you really know what you're talking about. Like you, you, you practice the skill, you spend learning, there's evidence, all of the things that make you an expert on that field. And somebody's talking about that field and you can tell that they know no shit. Maybe they read one article or they just finished reading something and they're coming very happy about it. How many of you have met that person? We know these people, right? So imagine doing that in problems like this where our life is at stake. So, which is why we're doing it. So, unfortunately, I can't, I don't have, a, and maybe Nick was, was to blame here, because he told me, don't finish on a, on a good note. Anyway, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a solution for this. And I'm honestly perplexed by this and really um, challenged by how do you solve such a big problem when education is designed for 100 years to serve an era where knowledge, the access to knowledge was the biggest problem. So that your teacher was like, someone like me will stand here and will give you access to knowledge and then will give you a method of how to uncover the evidence or how someone uncovered the evidence and then you're set. Well, now you have access to knowledge. How do you solve the problem of the lack of focus on uncovering what the evidence is, methodology, you know, building skill set? how to uncover the truth, telling stories that really inspire you and somehow changes your belief, somehow impacts your system of value, somehow causes you to leave a habit that's not serving you to, to a habit that serves you. I don't know. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, and I don't know if we take questions anyway, but no if questions. you, so if this is, these are my details. So okay. if you, if you want to talk about this, I'm happy to take a coffee. Um, and to talk about this, um, it's a topic I'm passionate about. Thank you very much for having me. I hope this was valuable for your time and you had a good time. Thanks.